I didn't want to discuss them. This was clearly something. I need your help again, Nobby. Well, okay, I suppose. I'm looking for a dwarf named Reagan. He's been missing. Missing? What kind of missing? Missing for a few hours, missing person, missing in the shades. Help me out here, will you? Missing person, I guess. How long's he been missing? Three days. Three days? You've got to be kidding. That barely counts as a hangover in Ankh-Morpork, pork, let alone a missing person case. How long would he have to be missing, then? I'd say at least three weeks. Three weeks? Of course, it'd depend on who he was. If the patrician went missing for three hours, I'd it warrant an investigation. Justice for some, eh? Still here? Not for much longer, I hope. I showed Reagan's picture to the first mate, and he recognized it. Yes, I think that was the dwarf who pulled up in a carriage shortly after we docked. I think he collected some of the cargo, too. Do you remember which way he went? He drove away hubwards at high speed. I wouldn't be surprised if he caused an accident somewhere down the line. <laughs> I need your help again, Nobby. I suppose. Have you heard of a troll called... Oh yeah, he's a... He's a tr How come you've heard? Well, Voim's always asked us... Is he a lob? Well, he's careful. A bit like you. Yeah. No. I am comp... Yeah. I, uh, well, if... Did anyone report a speeding carriage three days ago? Funny you should ask that. Sergeant Colon was almost run down by a carriage three days ago. He's been going on about it ever since. Says we ought to have speed limits for carriages. How would you tell what speed a carriage was going? Uh, well, a watchman's instincts are never wrong. You could always go for a more preventative approach. Like what? Well, you could ban carriages altogether. Yeah, that'd work. Hey, you could go one step further. You could ban people from Ankh-Mor Pork, and then there'd be no crime at all. Well, there'd still be the trolls and the dwarfs, and the gargoyles, and the gnomes, and the undead and the golems. Of course, the golems don't make much crime, and the gargoyles' only crime is Avicide. And it's not like we're short of pigeons. But the trolls and the dwarfs, well, I mean, they make as much crime as any of the humans, maybe even more. It's no fun when it's this easy. Like shooting fish at a barrel. Eh? Never mind. About this carriage the other night. Where did Colon see it? I think he said it was headed for the Maudlin Bridge. It wasn't much of a lead, but at least it was something. Usually you could only get a lead out of Nobby with a scalpel. The Maudlin Bridge was one of ten bridges that linked the city of Ankh to the city of Morpork. It was an unremarkable structure, most famous for the number of suicides it attracted. The trouble with trying to drown yourself in the Ankh is that you're more likely to break a leg falling onto the thick crust of the river than actually come near any water. 
Still, if you were heavy enough, you could eventually sink into the depths. I can think of nicer ways to go, though, and much quicker ones, too. The railings had been damaged. There was no telling when they'd become damaged, though. It wasn't as if I came this way every day. I doubt many people did. The River Ankh. Probably the only river in the universe on which you could chalk the outline. Some fabric had caught on the railings of the bridge. When the Milka left, someone must have left one of the mooring lines behind. That was careless. Some people will steal anything. If I pride myself on anything, it's that I don't steal without a good reason. Well, I don't steal rope without a good reason. Some people will steal anything, and that includes me, it seems. I see, sir. A sir who is the count? I've got a few more questions. Uh, go. On. Do you recognize this fabric? Uh, yeah, yes, it's familiar, yes, I remember, it's from the carriage, I liked the carriage, do you know where it is? From Reagan's carriage? Yes, yes, from the canopy. That's what I thought. I found someone who saw Reagan's carriage the other night. Just let me know. Well, I... Three nights ago, Reagan left the wharf in Ankh, heading hubwards in a carriage. Did you see him? Don't know nothing. The river I Besides, the river seemed slightly more liquid here than at the wharf. Well, I use the term liquid loosely. If it wasn't for the fact that it moves faster than the surrounding land, I wouldn't know what to call it. There was something down there. I was sure of it. But I wasn't strong enough to pull it up. Well? Listen carefully, Malachite. I've been patient with you, and you owe me a favor. I need you to use the grapple to pull something out of the river Ankh. I don't know for sure what it is, but it's big. Too big for me to lift. But you could do it. And I figure you owe me one. Find Thema! All right! You big 
dumb troll. I'll carry on looking for Therma if you help me get this thing out of the river. Do we have a deal? I pull thing. You find Therma. Yes. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Or something. Whatever you want scratched, within reason. Don't want scratching. Find Therma. Okay. You pull thing, I find Therma. Got it? Need grapple. That may be the first intelligent thing you've said to me. Ready now? You lead. With pleasure. I hadn't been able to move whatever it was in the river. Malachite pulled it up onto the bridge like it was made of paper. I wasn't surprised to learn it was Reagan's carriage, but it still wasn't clear how it ended up going off the bridge. Amidst the wreckage, I found a small ornamental box. But before I could examine it in detail, Malachite took an interest. I didn't want to give it to him, but he looked like he'd rupture a fault line if I didn't. He kept insisting that the box proved that Therma was alive, or at least that's my best interpretation of what he was trying to say. With his usual annoying habit, Malachite just walked off, taking the box with him. That left me to get back to my usual habit of not really knowing what was going on. There was no doubt that it was Reagan, and there was no doubt that he was dead. The poor sap must have suffocated in the Ankh. I searched Reagan's body, but all I found was a pair of tiny bite marks on his ankle. Either he'd been bitten by a snake, or a very small vampire. One thing had been bugging me since I'd found Reagan's body. In the iconograph that the Count had given me, Reagan was bald. Here, in the flesh, Reagan had a full head of hair. I had to pull hard on his toupee to get it off. Reagan must have glued it on to stop it from flying off as he drove the carriage. Underneath the toupee was a small key. I guess it must have been important, or he wouldn't have glued it to his head. The carcass of Reagan's carriage lay on the bridge like a beached whale. See, sir. Uh, sir, who is the Count receiving guests? No, but he will see you. I've got a few more questions for you, Count. Uh, go. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. It's Regin, isn't it? He's dead. I'm afraid so. I found his carriage near the Maudlin Bridge. It must have lost control and skidded into the river. Reagan must have drowned, or suffocated. It's hard to say with a river like the Ankh. Very well, of course. I will pay you for your time. If you should hear anything else in connection with this case, please let me know. Otherwise, consider the case closed. There is one thing. I think Reagan may have been involved with a troll singer named Therma. I'm not really sure about the details. I'm sort of investigating the Therma case at the moment. But since I'm not getting paid for it, I may have to give it up. Indeed. How would you feel if I were to pay you for the Therma case and you continued to investigate it? Hmm? I'd feel a little bit richer and a lot happier. <laughs> Very well. <laughs>
<laughs> it's agreed. I knew that someone had pushed the card under the door, and I knew what it meant. It meant that I should have fitted a letter. Have arranged meeting with Therma on the rooftops at the junction of Salis Street and Phaedra Road. Come immediately. Salis and Phaedra. There wasn't much around there. Nice and quiet. <laughs> Well? It's not been easy, but I've arranged a meeting with Therma. Huh? Take me there. Take me to Therma. In a moment. First, there's a couple of things we need to discuss. <laughs> Take me to Therma. Take me now. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go. The rooftops above Salis and Fedra were quiet. No one had a reason to be up here. I was looking forward to meeting the mysterious Therma, and I was hoping I might get some answers out of her. Unfortunately, the last thing I remembered was looking up at the moon. The next thing I knew, I was being arrested by the Watch. They told me Malachite was as dead as two sides of bacon, and I was the prime suspect. His back had been chipped away like he'd said something particularly insulting to a disgruntled quarry workman, and they seemed to think my crowbar was the murder weapon. I had the opportunity and a possible murder weapon. All they were missing was motive. And anyone who had ever tried to get an intelligent comment out of the troll had a motive to kill him. It looked like I'd been stitched up as nicely as a fine genuine tapestry. They took me to Pseudopolis Yard to be interrogated. They had a salamander lamp shining in my eyes so I couldn't see what was going on, but I could hear Nobby and a troll talking in the darkness. It was probably Detritus, the first troll to join the watch. Detritus was the troll many people in Ankh Morpork thought of when they heard the word troll bringing back, as it does, vague memories of sudden concussion and extreme pain. Sometimes you'd hear two short planks being described as thick as detritus. Your ideal street cop, in fact. So I'm the good cop? No, I'm the good cop. You're the bad cop. Dad, why don't I get to prod him a bit with my fists? Because we're supposed to get information out of him, and it's hard to understand people talking through a mouthful of loose teeth. I can smash lightly, more like a gentle caress, right? No. No punching. Uh, I can kick using minimal acceptable force. Like Mr. Vimes says, lots of it. No. No punching. No kicking. We just talk to him. Talk? Right, well, I'll talk. You shout. All right, you've done it. Own up now. We know it was you. No, 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 not yet. Oh, all right. I've just got to start the audiograph. Right. All right, you've done it now. You've got to sing like one of them flappy twittery things. Wait. I've got to start the recording properly, otherwise it doesn't count. Right. Interviewing Suspect Luton. Present, Corporal Nobbs and Sergeant Detroitus. Now? Now. All right, you've done it. You might as well make it easy on yourself. Everyone know it was you. This is my interrogation, is it? Don't you change the subject, you miserable excuse for a horse's donkey. Just tell us what happened, Luton. Here the facts. Fact. Mundy was killed. You found it at the murder scene. I was unconscious. How are you knowing you was unconscious? 
if he was unconscious, eh? <laughs> Foiled you with logic. Now you listen to me good, and then we see who wears the long two-legged garments. Fact. Escape thingy, Mount Malachite. Thingy? You mean troll? Nah. Not escape troll. Escaped... Uh... Feline. Escaped feline? Yeah, he escaped from a holding cell. Is it possible the word we're looking for here is felon? That's the one. What did he do? Hey, we asked the questions, you miserable Arugaraha. You know what Arugaraha mean? He knocked over the Van Uberwald mansion. I never knocked over the Von Uberwald mansion. Now, that's what Malachite did. So what does Arugraha mean? In the precise moment that dog droppings turn white. I think you'd better get back to being the bad cop. I'm the good cop. Now, I'm the good cop. So that make me... Uh... The bad cop. So how come I not get to hit you then? We can't beat him up, Detroitus. That'd be police brutality. It only brutality if you leave marks. What show? Escape thingy, Mount Malachite. Was killed. And you was found at the murder scene there too. Once again, I was unconscious. Oh, how convenient for you. Two murders and two unconscious gisnesses. What about the murder weapon, eh? What about the crowbar? Tell us where you got the crowbar, and I'll give you a smoke. One of your dog ends? No, thanks. I'll get you coffee. Maybe some cherry cake. New suit. You get to choose the color. I, I think you're taking this good cop role too seriously. Thank you. Now my turn. You want to fall down the steps to the cell without leaving your chair? It's fine by me. Look, I had a meeting with a troll named Therma on the rooftops of Salis and Fedra. I'd arranged it on Malachite's behalf, and when we got there, I must have been knocked unconscious by the killer. I know it sounds improbable, but that's how it happened. Two murders, and you happen to be unconscious at the scene of both. You gotta admit, Luton, it's a little far-fetched. You want I should make up a defense? You want I should lie? This is the lawyer's guild all of a sudden? Just tell us what you know. I've told you all I know. How come you know Malachite? I met him in the streets. He wanted me to find someone called Therma. When you find out he was a felony. A felon. And I didn't find out until just now. Luton, you're going down for murder. I don't think it's worth pretending you don't know who Malachite was. I didn't know who he was. Do I need to draw you a map? To what? It just doesn't seem right, Luton. You being a detective and all and not knowing one of your clients was an escaped felon. What can I say? I guess I'm not as good a detective as you are. You want to know what else? I wouldn't mind that map you mentioned. Might make things a little clearer. Shut up, Detritus. There isn't a map. He said there was. I kept following Malachite's case because it intrigued me. And the more I dug, the more interesting it became. What did you find out? I don't know. I guess I learned that I shouldn't have tracked down Therma. It seems likely to me that she's Malachite's murderer. Why don't you interrogate her? There's no troll named Therma in Ankh-Morpork. You expect us to believe that this Therma killed Malachite and Mundy and framed you for both? Come on, sing like a pigeon on a stool. You done it, didn't you? There's no reasoning with you, is there? Not often. Come on, you ugly sewer scraping. We want something we can believe. That's enough, Detritus. Sir? You can go. I did it right? Let's say you were everything I expected. Now go and write up the report. Not in crayon this time, please. That should keep him busy for a few days.
He may be slow, but he's not an untrustworthy killer like you. Why the personal interest in this case, Vimes? I'm sure you've got more important things to do now you're Commander of the Watch. My reasons are my own. You're not interested in my guilt or innocence. You're just out to nail me. Frankly, Luton, I've got all the evidence of your guilt I need, and if I get my way, they'll lock you up and melt down the key for scrap iron. You're a bad cop, and I don't have any time for you. If you're so convinced of my guilt, why the interrogation? Nobby has this deranged idea that there might be some extenuating circumstances that we ought to find out about. It'd make everything a lot easier if you'd confess, Luton. I'm sure you had a good reason to do what you did. Let us help you. Cigarette? Holiday for two in Querm, see face in room, we pay the mini barbell? I'm not guilty and I'm not confessing to a crime I didn't commit. Listen to me, Luton. We're conducting this interrogation because I believe in upholding the law. There is no law in Ankh-Morpork. True enough, but there's my law and there's the patrician's law. Which would you rather face? What's the difference? Lord Vetinari considers it a happy state of affairs if the punishment can involve the actual perpetrator, but sees it as by no means essential. I consider it to be absolutely essential. But you've already decided that I'm guilty. That doesn't mean I've proved it. And if I prove my innocence? That's not going to happen. Then what's the point of this farce? Smoke? No. The thing is, Luton, we just want to find out what happened. Do one decent thing in your life, Luton. Help us close this case. Why should I? So we can close this sorry little act and concentrate on the threat to the city. The threat? The counterweight killings. Surely you have other suspects for the murders I'm accused of, even if you don't think they're part of the counterweight killings. Uh, Smoke? A set of the complete plays of Huel the Dwarf, bound in nearly real leather? No, I don't want a smoke. I want to know who the other suspects are. At the moment, you're top of our list. Although you are the bottom of our list, too. I am the list, aren't I? Sorry. Don't apologize, Nobby. Listen, Luton. There are other suspects for the counterweight killings, and we're investigating those. But for Mundy and the Troll, you're the bottom line. What about Horst? What does Horst have to do with anything? He's been watching me. He's up to something. He's always up to something. But he's not a murderer. Not by his own hand, anyway. He'd never be so careless as to carry out a murder himself. He's not that dumb. What about Al Kali? Al Kali? One of Horst's cronies. I think he's been following me. I guess I could interview him. Why do I have a feeling that you won't? Face it, Luton. You killed Mundy. You killed Malachite. And you tried to make it look like it was part of the counterweight killings. What about Reagan? The dead dwarf? What about him? Another murder in suspicious, almost ritualistic circumstances. He's a nobody, but it has all the hallmarks of a counterweight killing. Are you confessing to the murder of Reagan? No. I'm just saying that Mundy and Malachite aren't the only nobodies to get bumped off in mysterious circumstances. There was nothing mysterious about Reagan's death. People don't just drive carriages off a bridge for no reason. He was driving recklessly across the city. It's probably just a suicide. Maybe he was just drunk. What about the bite marks? Bite marks? There weren't any bite marks. I looked. Reagan was murdered. I'm sure of it. You've got bigger problems than that right now, Luton. I suggest you concentrate on them. Doesn't it make more sense that both Mundy and Malachite were killed by this so-called counterweight killer? That's what you'd like us to believe, isn't it? You make the murders look like the counterweight killings and hope to get away with it. That's it, isn't it? You're not interested in me. You want to catch the counterweight killer. You're just a low-life killer, Luton. My job is to protect citizens from people like you. What? 
You don't even like them much. You think they're all criminals. Maybe. But murder leaves the place too messy. Look, Luton, we don't think you're involved with the counterweight killings. But we have to know which ones are which if we're going to stop him from killing again. This is your chance to be a hero. To help us to catch a foreign assassin. A hero? There's nothing I can do to save myself. Why should I care about the rest of the city? You were a good man once, Luton. This could be your one shot at redemption. I was never that good a shot. You ought to know, Luton, that you are a suspect in the counterweight killings. That crowbar of yours was palace property, which means you had access to at least one of the murder sites. You're getting desperate, aren't you? We're wasting our time with you. Will you explain to me why you're so confident that Mundy and Malachite weren't killed by whoever was responsible for the rest of the counterweight killings? Everyone else has been sort of important. Mundy and the trowel were nobodies. Quiet, Nobby. You're crazy. You think you've found a pattern and you're forcing everything else to fit it. We're doing our job. Nothing I say is going to convince you of my innocence, is it? It doesn't look that way. All right. Yes, I was in Mundy's room when he was killed, but I was unconscious. And yes, I was on the rooftops when Malachite was killed. Again, I was unconscious. I don't know what happened, but somebody knocked me out. And whoever they are, they're the one you should be looking for. Fine. If that's the way you want it, that's the way you'll get it. Give my regards to Lord Veterinary when your trial comes up. I doubt he'll be as patient with you as I have. The fact is, mister, that with you behind bars, the city will be a slightly better place. They delivered me into the hands of the palace guards, who delivered me into the walls of a holding cell. I had a bad feeling about the way things were going. Mostly people who were sent to the patrician for trial got seen right away. Rumor had it that being put in a holding cell pending trial was like being filed away in a drawer marked forgotten. And not a very big drawer at that. Thank <laughs> you.